Good day, brothers and sisters. This is Gospel Sounders, Rekindling Reformation, a ministry dedicated to spreading the three angels' messages around the world, working closely with the revelation with Daniel, which is led by brother Daniel Mesa. Welcome once again to the presentation of today and this is the Lateran series. Today we are looking at uh, number 14 in the series, the ultimate character formation. And uh, I want to thank the Lord because uh, I have been blessed. Personally, I don't just present what I present. As I present, I listen to the voice of the Lord, what is He speaking to my soul. Uh, I do use slides. I do use LNG White and the Bible. But uh, apart from the slides and the notes I make, there is fresh information that the Lord brings unto me while I'm presenting things that I have never seen, new dimensions of the truth. And um, yesterday I really felt the Lord uh, guiding me when I was presenting the judgment of the living because uh, I had made slides but I went out of them and uh, saw some new materials that uh, the Lord directed me to share. And so it's not just a matter of going through the slides and uh, what you have prepared, but uh, it is uh, preparing our hearts so that the Lord may speak unto us as we make notes, as uh, we look at the information that we have. The Lord increases the fragments that we gather and uh, makes the old light shine in a new way, in, in the broadest sense. And uh, we know that uh, the doctrine of the law, the latter rain will be the doctrines of uh, the doctrine of God, of uh, flowing and lighting the whole earth with glory in a new dimension. It doesn't mean that uh, the gospel, the everlasting gospel, as we draw to the end, it becomes something else. It is the same gospel, but shining forth with greater light than we have never seen. Just like in the old sanctuary, in the typical service. It was the embodiment of Jesus Christ. Today, when we look at that sanctuary, we see things differently, uh, way beyond how the Jewish people saw them, how the Hebrews saw them. But it is the same, same everlasting gospel of the sanctuary. But now, the symbols being unveiled and uh, uh, revealed what they pointed to, how they applied to our time, this is the everlasting gospel. And so, I'm really having a good time in the sense that uh, the Lord is speaking to my heart and to my soul as I present this. And uh, I believe the Lord is speaking to you too as uh, we go all through this. And so I want to welcome you to today's presentation. That is the ultimate character perfection attained immediately prior to the second advent. Shall we pray? You can take the position that you can take wherever you are. Uh, the Lord sees us and... Uh, he knows the intents of our heart, whether we kneel or we don't kneel, but take the right position as far as you can as we approach the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I know without the Spirit, our information is like just another novel 
that people will be reading or listening to as it's being read. Unless the Holy Spirit attends to the word, the speaker is nothing but a noisy symbol. And so you alone can drive this word into the innermost parts of the souls of the children and let the word cut and not the voice and the tone and let the people draw closer to thee. Start with me that I may be converted for thy holy service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are living in uh, interesting times and uh, you will bear witness with me. This is not just a mere phrase that uh, we always have to speak, that we are living in uh, interesting times, we are living in solemn time, we need to pray, we need to study. These are not normal phrases. You, should not, you shouldn't be taking them as just uh, normal phrases coming from the lips of the ministers. No. I want to repeat, we are living in interesting times. And wherever you look, you will know that it is going to rain. You don't have to be told by a neighbor it is going to rain. Carry your umbrella. You know what I mean. Carry your coat. The day is going to be raining. And for those who can wear light clothes, wear them. The, go, the, the day is going to be sunny to some. The day is going to be rainy to some. And so, pray the Lord that he gives you the right apparel and the right information for how is the weather today. I'm talking about spiritual matters that you need to understand how is the weather today. It, it doesn't seem like to others that it's going to rain or it will be a sunny day. But be prepared for the weather that is before us because the Lord is doing something so important that we need to be attentive to. And so, I welcome you to the presentation today. That is the ultimate character formation. Where is the best place to start such a presentation? We ask ourselves. And the best place to start is in the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, it is chapter... Matthew chapter 5 and look at verse 48 this to me is key to this presentation Matthew please do not just listen take your Bible take your notebook write something Matthew 5 48 it says, be perfect even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, I'm one of the people who believes that the Lord will never ask me to do something that I cannot do. The Lord will always accomplish something in our lives. The next verse I'd like to look at is uh, the book of uh, the book of uh, Philippians. The book of Philippians, chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, is it verse 12? Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 verses 12 
to us is to verses 18 12 to verses 18 so for that slug Philippians chapter 2 verses 12 to verses 18 and this is how the word of the Lord says Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered up upon the sacrifice, if I yeah, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of you, your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do, do ye rejoice. Do ye, for the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. So Paul is very clear that it is the Lord who worketh to do in us of his good pleasure. Another verse I'm looking at. Another verse that uh, I'm going to look at is also in the book of uh, Philippians. The book of Philippians. Chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. It says, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So, if thou not be perfect, and thus minded, God shall reveal this unto you. The book of First Peter, chapter 2. The book of First Peter, chapter 2. And uh, let me see. I'll start from verse 21. from verse 21 For even here unto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps Who did no sin neither guile was found in his mouth who, when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, 
but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were hid. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And so as you put these verses together, you are seeing that the Lord is calling us unto perfection, the perfect character formation. We are looking at the presentation, ultimate character formation. This is what the Lord is calling us unto. Again, I look unto Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And uh, I look at uh, verses uh, ten and verses eleven. I think you still have the screen with you. It says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, meaning that as he is perfect, they that are sanctified are also perfect. The book of Hebrews chapter 5, I'll just go down some verses. From... Verses 7 to verses 9. Verses 7 to verses 9. It says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying, tears unto him that was able to save him from the death, and was heard in that he feared, Though he were a son, yet learned, obedient by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all the, them that obey him. In the obedient, there is perfection. And the perfection comes from Christ himself. And so... You are seeing that pattern that uh, the Bible is bringing out that the last generation has just looked like Jesus Christ. I'll read another thing. 1 John, 1 John 2, 6, a familiar verse. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself to walk even as he walked. How did Christ walk? in a sinless state in a sinless state when you go down uh chapter three it talks about uh, behold what manner of love hath man of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and doth not appear yet what we shall be when, but when, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him. How is he? He is a perfect being. And uh, talking about uh, what we shall be, it says that uh, we shall be like him. Somebody may ask, 
what does it mean to be like him? Colossians 3, 4. Colossians 3, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Go back. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Like him how? Appear with him in glory. The ultimate character formation. This is the Lateran series. The title of the presentation is the ultimate character perfection. So, in him are all riches. In him are all riches that are needed for human beings to be perfect before him. And we can partake of this by only being in him. By only being in him. And so, we are told, when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put in the sickle. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he shall come to claim them as his own. The nearer we come to Christ, the less exalted we will be. This will be true after God's people have the seal of God in their forehead. There is no stopping place in the work of perfecting Christian character in this life. In fact, a speedy growth in character development will take place after receiving the seal of God. This will be made possible firstly by the reviving and strengthening latter rain, then by wrestling in earnest prayer during the time of Jacob's time of trouble. Character development after the sealing may be illustrated from the life of Jesus. At the commandment of his ministry, he was sealed with the fullness of the Spirit. And uh, you can check this in John 6, 27 and chapter 3, verses 34. And uh, uh, chapter 4, verses 18. This is no way indicated that there was no further perfecting growth in his life. During his spirit-filled ministry, he was developing a perfect character. He was made perfect by the things he suffered. The verses that we have just read in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, and, uh, and uh, Hebrews 5, 9, and you can read this in 19. Testimonies to the Church, volume 9, page 21. Likewise, when God's people are perfected and cleansed from sin, they will be sealed with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13, 4, 30, and 3, 2, 67. The latter end will revive them from the agonizing struggle which they'll pass through in order to receive the seal of God. Write down Testimony to the Church, Volume 5, page 473 to 75. I'll be writing 269 to 271, and then you jump to page 85. Although the seal of eternal deliverance will be upon God's people, they will have trials individually. This will be especially true during the time of Jacob's trouble. It is a necessary perfecting experience for God's people, not a needless trial. Tribulation worketh patient and patient experience and experience hope. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. The time of the trouble that is coming before us will need a faith that many of us are so intolerant in now. Uh, obtaining it and the time to exercise our muscles is this time it is not a time to exercise little faith at such a time that we are living in it will be unbearable if we come at such a time when we do not have a faith that can endure the trials that are coming to this world if we are living at such a time as this 
we should be asking the Lord to perfect us and to make us whole so that we may be able to stand in his presence a holy people. As you know, we are living in the most solemn period of the world history. And every follower of Christ should be inquiring, Lord, what will thou have me to do? The problem, I want you to look at the problem that we are having in uh, Great Condover 601, paragraph 2. Some of us have reached at a point that uh, we don't see a need of advancing. We, we, we have reached a time that we have become rich and in need of nothing. And this is the problem that is hindering us from advancing into another step of glory by beholding Jesus Christ. This is how the prophet puts it. Many are deceived as to their true condition. This is uh, Great Condover 602, paragraph 1. Many are deceived as to their true condition before God. They congratulate themselves upon the wrong acts which they do not commit and forget to enumerate the good and noble deeds which God requires of them, but which they have neglected to perform. It is not enough that they are trees in the garden of God. They are to under his expectation by bearing fruit. He holds them accountable for their failure to accomplish all the good which they could have done through his grace strengthening him, them. In the books of heaven, they are registered as cumbers of the ground. So this failure of uh, continuing in faith and uh, desiring just to be as perfect as Jesus Christ is, is counted as trees cumbering grounds. The season of distress before us. The season of distress and anguish before us will require faith that can endure weariness, delay, and hunger, a faith that will not faint though severely tried. The period of probation is granted to all to prepare for that time. Jacob prevailed because he was persevering and determined. His victory is, in a, is an evidence of the power of importunate prayer. All who will lay hold of God's promise as he did and be as honest and persevering as he was, will succeed as he succeeded. Those who are unwilling to deny self, to agonize before God, to pray long and earnestly for his blessing will not obtain it. Wrestling with God, how few know what it is. How few have ever had their soul drawn out after God with intensity of desire until every power is on the straight. When waves of despair which no language can express, sweep over the supply, and how few cling with unyielding faith to the promises of God. Now, I'd I'll, I'll like just to point out something. In this ultimate formation, character formation, we will need men who can endure weariness. This is part of character formation, delay and hunger, a faith that will not faint though severely tried. And this period of probation is granted to us to prepare. And we will have a people who knows how to offer importunate prayer. Brothers and sisters, if you are neglecting prayer in your life, it is the most horrible thing that can ever happen to a person professing Christianity. We will need to be able to persevere in order to succeed. We will need to die and to deny self. This is how we form an ultimate character to survive during the time that are coming. We need to pray long and earnestly. We are looking at the presentation, the ultimate character perfection, the ultimate character formation. This is the series, the latter rain. And I'm giving you the ingredients that compose the 
obtaining of this character that can endure the time that are coming. We didn't know how to wrestle with God. And then we shall be able. Those who exercise but little faith now are in the greatest danger of falling under the power of satanic delusions and the decree to compel the cons conscience. And even if they endure the test, they will be plunged into deeper distress and anguish in the time of trouble because they have never made it a habit to trust in God. The lessons of faith which they have neglected, they'll be all forced to learn under terrible pressure of discouragement. I don't want to come at that time and uh, found myself that I have not exercised the things that I'm talking about. These are the things to be exercised so that we may have the ultimate character that will endure the time that is coming. These things do not just come by. No. How do they come by? How do these things come by? How does do these things come by? find it in uh, mm, let me see education page 57 education page 57 the greatest one of the world is a one of men men who will not be brought or sold Men who in their innermost souls are true and honest, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name, men whose concern is as true to the duty as the needle to the poor, men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. The ultimate character formation comes from men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. How does such a character come by? But such a character is not a result of accident. It is not due to special favors or endowments of God. That is providence. A noble character is the result of self-discipline, subjection of the lower to the higher nature, the surrender of self, for the service of love to God and man. This is the presentation, ultimate character formation that can endure the time that is coming. I'm giving you the prerequisites, the ingredients that will make us have this character. Self-discipline, subjection of the law to the higher nature, surrender of self, for what? For the service of love to God and man. I hope you are writing these things down. This is ultimate character formation. The Lord is waiting for this to be manifested in his church. How did the standard bearers reach to such a position? One SM one SM, I believe it is one twenty two. One SM one twenty two point one. Let us see how the old standard bearers were able to get such a character. The old standard bearers knew what it was to wrestle with God in prayer and to enjoy this outpouring of His Spirit. And so, again, 
wrestling with God in prayer made them enjoy the outpouring of His Spirit. And so these are passing off from the stage of action and who are coming in to fill their places. How is it with the rising generation? Are they converted to God? Are we awake to the work that is going on in the heavenly sanctuary? Wrestling with God in prayer to enjoy the refreshing of His Spirit. There is something that brought about a character that was needed to face the time that they were facing, uh, passing in. And so, it is needful for them to be placed in the furnace of fire. Their earthliness must be consumed that the image of Christ may be perfectly reflected. This is the perfecting experience of the time of Jacob's trouble time of trouble. Now, this is, the Lord is passing us through a refinement. Our, our lives must be purified. The dross in us, the chaff in us must be removed that God may have a way so that uh, we may be able to enjoy a season of blessing. The lessons of faith which we have neglected will be forced to learn under terrible pressure and discouragement. And we don't have to wait until that time to start regretting. This is the time to actually realize our weakness and unworthiness and run to He who has all that we need. Uh, I'd like to point you to something in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. First of all, I re I'll read something in uh, Hebrews uh, 12, verses uh, 14, then I go back to verse 1. Hebrews Chapter 12, verses 14. It says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Because we are talking about the ultimate character for formation. We are talking about peace and holiness, without which no man shall see God. But uh, look at... Uh, Where does this peace come from? I'm reading familiar verses that, uh, and putting them in, in their context so that we may see what the Lord is speaking to us. 14.27, it says that uh, peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So, this peace we are talking about in 12.14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That peace, it is only Christ who gives it. In fact, uh, uh, looking at uh, that verse keenly, Allah, when, when he talks about this peace, how, how does... This peace comes to us in uh, which way? This peace, when you look at, um, I, I'll put something on the screen so that you may see how this peace comes about. Uh, this is uh, in uh, MH247.1. Uh, MH247.1. Abiding peace, true rest of what? The spirit has but one source. So he says in 12.14 of Hebrews, follow peace with everyone and holiness without which no man shall see God. 
And in John chapter 14, verse 27, he says that my peace I give unto you. So what kind of this peace is he talking about? This peace is the true rest of the spirit. It was of this that Christ spoke when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. John 14, 7, 14, 27. This peace is not something that he gives apart from himself. It is in Christ. And we can receive it only by receiving him. So this peace we are talking about is the peace that will come after the true rest of the spirit rests upon you. And then it will reproduce the fruit of the spirit that will make you follow peace with everyone and holiness without which no man shall see God. And we know that when this Peace is given in the form of the Spirit. It seals us for the day of redemption as even Ephesians verse, chapter 4 verses 30 says. And so the character, ultimate character formation we are talking about, it's not something that actually can be manufactured out of Christ. First of all, we have to see our weakness, then run unto Christ to give us this true peace so that we may be at peace and holiness. We must come to a place we reverend the Lord. We must come at a place that we obey his commandments. The Lord has made so that we may have conflicts to prepare the soul for peace. In fact, now when uh, we see the world in war, in disease, pandemic, pestilence, famine, and uh, rumors of wars, what the world is talking about. In fact, the other people will say peace, peace. And when they are saying peace, peace, trouble shall come upon them. And so everyone in this time of trouble is looking for peace. And how do we look? Do you look for peace in violence? No. The true rest of the spirit must be in us for us to have the peace we need. And it is during conflict that uh, character is revealed. But we don't have to wait until character is revealed in a time of trouble. It is something that has to be embedded in us as we speak right now. And we must learn how to wrestle with God. So, when the character of Christ is perfected, shall be reproduced in us, then he will come to claim us as his own. And then the church will be gathered unto him. And so, do we want to be sealed and to receive the latter rain? Then we must appropriate the deal of the latter rain and the showers of the early rain that is already falling on the people and be fitted for translation. Now, Christ says, let us go to the book of John. John chapter 15. The book of uh, John chapter 15. John 15. And uh, I'll be reading. From verse 1 to verse 17. We are talking about uh, the ultimate character formation. This is the latter end series. This is number 15 in the presentation. John chapter 15. Let us look at it. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruit. 
So it is Christ himself who is purging the branches so that they may bring forth more fruit. Remember, we cannot manufacture righteousness and the character that's needed in the time of trouble. We must let Christ have his way in our lives. Now, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. So, there is no bearing of fruit except abiding in Christ. He is the vine, and we are the branches. He that abideth in him, and he in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing without Christ. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them in the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so ye be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, continue in my love. Now, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and I abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might, be, might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay, the man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I ordain you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Now he is talking about agape love, and us being clean, because his words dwells in us. And so he says that without him we cannot do anything, without him we cannot bear fruit. In fact, if we gathered all the good works, I'll show you this. If we have to gather all the good works that we have and present it before the Lord as the merits of righteousness, it will be counted as treason before the Lord. And so this ultimate character formation, it has to be something that comes with the indwelling of Christ in us, the hope of glory. The reproducing of the character of Christ is only enabled by the abiding presence of Christ in us. And so, let us say this. In uh, 1888 messages, page uh, 816, paragraph 1. I want you to see this. I want us to learn together. I ask, how can I present this matter as it is? And also, this is what uh, I can ask you, because 1888, there was what we call danger of false ideas on justification by faith, how we receive the merits of Christ, how are we made uh, perfect, what is sanctification, the deity of Jesus Christ, and how it works in a believer, the divine nature, how it works in a believer, and uh, how we may, are made righteous. And so, Sister White was laboring to tell the people how we can get this character that is fit for heaven, how justification by faith takes place, how sanctification works in the life of a believer, and how a believer is able to be accepted in heaven before the Father. And she says, I ask, how can I present this matter as it is? The Lord Jesus imparts all the powers, all the grace, all the penitent, all the inclination, all the pardon of sins, in presenting his righteousness for man to grasp by living faith, which is also the gift of God. 
all the things we have are gifts from God. If you will gather together everything that is good and holy and noble and lovely in man, and then present the subject to the angels of God as acting as a part in the salvation of human soul or in merit, the proposition will be rejected as treason. Standing in the presence of their creator and looking upon the unsurpassed glory which enshrouded his person, they are looking upon the Lamb of God given from the foundation of the world to a life of humiliation, to be rejected of sinful men, to be despised, to be crucified. Who can measure the infinity of the sacrifice? So, men were grappling with the idea, how can we appear before the Lord as righteous? How can we have the character fit for heaven? And she is telling them that if we could gather all the good deeds of men, and even gather all the compassionate men around the world and their bowels of compassion and present it in heaven as a means of our justification and as a means of righteousness, the angels will reject this as treason. You want to overthrow the government of God. If there is anything in us that can merit us to enter in the gates of heaven, then what does it mean? Christ's death on Calvary is nothing. And so it is accepting Christ to reproduce himself in us. And how does this work? Surrender, total surrender. Now, as Christ came to the world, he said that, I have come to do thy will, O Father. And he surrendered the whole of his life, his mind, his body, to the Father to take control. Not, not as a puppet. He had decisions to make. But the decisions were to be subject to the word of the Lord. And so, every step that he, he made was a step of faith acting upon the word of God and not acting upon his own ideas. And so, uh, the thing that we are talking about is uh, every step of faith that must be taken, it's taken upon the word of the Lord. Not what we think, this is what will please the Lord. And this is how righteousness works. Righteousness and faith goes hand in hand in that you believe that the Lord will do what he has said he will do and acting upon his word by the grace he imparts. The power does not come from uh, us, but the power comes from him so that we may be able to do his perfect will. And so the issue of ultimate character perfection it is actually surrendering to christ our whole being so that he may be able to work in us righteousness and have a character that is fit for heaven and so in this time that we are living in there are some things that uh, must happen in our life let us look at them and uh, i think the lord will bless us one of the things the church is tested with and uh, threatened with imprisonment and death as we near the end, these are the things that we shall see happening in our life. In this time, the gold will be separated from the dross in the church. Then follows the latter rain, la, the, 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 latter rain the loud cry. You can check uh, 60, page uh, 400 to 401. And then uh, uh, those who come up to every point and stand every test, including the threat of death, and overcome, be the price what it may have heeded the counsel of the true witness and they will receive the latter rain and thus be fitted for translation. The, you have to receive Christ in his fullness in your heart so as to be able to go through this period. We must allow the winnowing to take place. We must allow everything to be taken out so that Christ may have the indwelling power. Nothing shall come between us and our God, not family, not a, a child, not anything, not a wife, should ever come between you and your Christ. It reaches a point that um, these have to be individual decisions. Yes, it is appropriate and it is uh, important that we may move as a family. 
But when actually we can't move with the family, then it behooves us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. It is the latter end which revives the people of God. And in order for them to receive, self must come out of them fully. No man or woman will receive the seal of God while practicing non-sin or thinking that he can get merits by his own doing. And so, what, what must we do to be saved? Uh, 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 as we close, I like to look at uh, what must we do to be saved in this time. What must we do to be saved as we come to close? The book of Psalms. I'll go to the book of Psalms. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to have this character? It is in Psalms. The division is 116. I'll go through Psalms 116. 1 to 14, though it has 19 verses. Psalms 116. It says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. We are closing. We are having a good time right now. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Verse 3 says, The sorrows of death combust me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble in sorrow. Then call I upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous here, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the symbol. I was brought low, and he helped me. He says, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. Remember, all these things are coming from the Lord, not anyone else. He is the work, one working in you to do of his own good pleasure. The psalmist continues, the psalmist realizing righteousness by faith and the ultimate character formation whom it comes, he says, Return all unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountiful with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, that is, delivered my soul from sin, mine ears from tears, and my feet from falling, sinning. 9. I'll walk before the Lord in the land of the living, that is, in the new earth and heaven. I believe, therefore I have spoken. This is a matter of faith. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. And then he asked himself, What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? I'll take the cup of salvation. Remember the cup that Christ drank in the garden of Gethsemane until instead of a... Uh, 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 what do we call it? His um, what? I'm forgetting the name. But his sweat blood. His sweat was like drops of blood. Yeah, that is it. So I'll take the cup of salvation. He said, that, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. But not according to me, but according to thy will. And so I'll take the cup of salvation. I'll take what Christ went through the garden of Gethsemane, enduring the cup. I'll appropriate his victory to be my victory. And I'll trust that his character he can give to me freely when he says that it is finished. Finished for what? The redemption of man, the plan of salvation being executed, the lamb bearing the sins of the people, the cup of salvation. I'll take it and call upon the name of the Lord. And I'll pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. What are these vows? My life. 
I'll give unto him, that he may be able to reproduce a character feed for me. He says that uh, steps to Christ, 43. The warfare against self is the greatest battle. But I'll read it for from the first place. God's promise is you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. The whole heart must be yielded to God or the change can never be wrought in us by which we are to be restored to his likeness ultimate character formation. By nature we are alienated from God. The Holy Spirit describes our condition in such a words as this, dead in trespass and sins. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. No soundness in it. We are held fast in the snare of Satan, taken captive by him at his will. Ephesians 2, 1, Isaiah 1, 5, 6 and 2 Timothy 2, 26. God desires to heal us, to set us free, but sin, he, this requires an entire transformation, a renewing of our whole nature. We must yield ourselves wholly to him. Now this, the warfare against self is the greatest battle that was ever fought. The yielding of self, surrendering all to the will of God, requires a struggle. But the soul must submit to God before it can be renewed in holiness. Now, shall I read this? Faith by works. Faith and works, page 100. But while God can be just and yet justify the sinner through the merits of Christ, no man can cover his soul with the garments of Christ's righteousness while practicing known sins or neglecting non-duties. God requires the entire surrender of the heart before justification can take place. And in order for man to retain justification, there must be continual obedience through active living faith that works by love and purifies the soul. Are you aiming for ultimate character formation? We are told in 2 Corinthians 3.18 as we look as we are looking as in a glass and behold Christ, we are changed from one glory to another. Whatever you have been fighting for in this life of character, ultimate character for perfection, the secret is this. The fall of man and even the rebellion in heaven where sin started, Satan looked at self and he continues to play the same game to us. It is like a chess. When he came in the garden of Eden, man fell because he looked at himself. When he saw, when she saw that the tree was good to be desired for wisdom, for food, she plucked of it. The caring about self. Peter started to sink because of looking to self. But there is one thing I can tell you is sure. As we continue beholding Jesus Christ, we are changed from glory to glory. This is the secret of everything. We cannot be changed by looking at self. We can only be changed by beholding Christ. This is the ultimate character uh, formation and can only be found in Christ. And so I recommend to you uh, Christ himself who is able to heal us, who is able to instill what is needed. He knows what is needed of us and he is the one that can give us what we need. And so be glad, ye children of Zion,
because the Lord is willing to do more exceedingly abundantly than we may ask of him. May the Lord bless you and uh, may the Lord be with you as we continue learning together. And uh, let his name be praised as we shall be continuing to look at this series, the Lateran series. May the Lord be with you and uh, let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this presentation and thy people. And we pray that uh, as we continue learning of thee, that you will reveal thyself unto us, that we may be able to reach and attain unto that perfect man that can be accepted before the pearly gates of heaven. This we cannot do without you. Impure us with the true peace, even the rest of the Spirit, that we may be equipped with the fruit of the Spirit that comes from possessing Christ in our hearts. And so thy name be glorified now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in until the next moment. God bless.